Hey guys, what's up? My name is Rhiannon and this is View Acre Farm. We're currently in my greenhouse. I'm farming in Central Virginia Zone 7B and today I'm going to be talking all about soil blocking, what I currently have started growing in my soil blocks up potting. This is also my first year soil blocking and I've already learned a lot so I'm going to be talking about some mistakes that I've made and some changes I'm going to make moving forward. All right, so I'm gonna take you around and show you what I have started so far. In zone 7B, it's mid-January or late January right now, I guess. Um, it's still too early to start really some frost tender things like uh, any frost tender flowers or any vegetables really, like tomatoes, peppers, all that. I do have some lettuces started. I'm gonna be starting my brassicas today. So like cabbages, broccoli, cauliflower, things of that nature. So most of the things that are in the greenhouse currently are going to be either cold hardy flowers or they're going to be flowers that take a really long time to germinate and or grow to harvest. So these are things like I have lisianthus here, I have larkspur, dianthus, echinacea, stock, um, things of that nature, those cool flowers. Um, that I have started currently and they're either going to take a long time or I can put them out like a month before my last frost date and just have them under row covers if the weather gets too cold. So I'm going to take you around here and show you what all I have growing currently. Okay, so first tray that I have here is uh, hollyhocks stock and then I have some kales that I had started a little bit earlier on. As you can see, these are in uh, a little bit bigger soil blocks. I believe these are two by two inch soil blocks. And then these are some mini blocks that I have going. So I have some Larkspur over here and that's already getting kind of tall. This is Scabiosa. I have some Dianthus growing here. The Rudbeckia is still very, very small. I don't know if it's going to be able to focus. There we go. And then I have some little baby snapdragons in here that are starting to germinate. And then these over here are uh, Echinacea are these Par paradiso paradiso that i got from baker creek and as you can see or maybe yet yeah, um there's not a ton of germination going on the only thing that's really growing over here is algae however i do have some more echinacea paradiso i think this is a mix yeah paradiso mix and these have actually germinated a lot better so i'm not sure if it was just Maybe the other seed packet was an older mix. They were both from Baker Creek, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, but this, uh, these seeds definitely germinated a lot better than the other ones did. I also have some, I think these are all Lysianthus, or these are Eucalyptus I have started down here. None of these have germinated. I just started this tray last week. So you can see the tiny little seeds in the middle. This is one right here. This is one. Um, so these are all Lysanthus. I have, it looks like Voyage to Green, Arena 3 Apricot, and then I believe these are Arena, yeah, Arena 3 Reds in the back here. So still waiting for those to germinate. I have some lettuce that I planted a couple weeks ago. I think these were all from last week as well. This is Larkspur. I have some rosemary seeds and these four soil blocks right here. I have some smaller onion seeds that I started. Um, these are secession sown. Um, I have some bigger ones that I already up potted into two inch soil blocks. This is my second secession of snapdragons. There we go. There's one, one teeny little one right here. 
Um, I have some more echinacea that I am trying to succession plant. Nothing's germinated there yet. I have some more stock. The stock has definitely been the first thing that's germinated out of most of these varieties I'm showing you today. So I'm super happy with the germination rate on the stock. These are some scabiosa seeds that are secession shown. And then this right here is some diantha dianthus. I think I just have the one little baby plant coming up right there. Over here is where I have up potted some of the mini soil blocks into these two inch soil blocks. So I've got, these are hollyhocks that I have started down here. And then I think it transitions into stock as we get further along into the tray. And then both of these trays over here are seed onions that I started and up potted. The sun's a little bright, but you can see all the little, um, the shoots that are coming up into these whole blocks. So the onions were pretty hardy, I would say. Oh, I do have some um, kills and like chards that I started back here and you can tell, so like seed onion, seed onion, seed onion. And then in this whole section right here, you can see there's really only one, two, three, four. This one's falling over. I don't know if that's gonna make it or not. But all of this section right here has died back. And so what I think happened is I do not have a lot of experience uh, soil blocking. This is my first year, as I said. And so I was taking smaller starts. So I would say probably I was taking starts like these little seedlings that were you know they're still very very small and i'm going to see if i can break this one off and show it to you so this still doesn't really have a root structure um this probably just has a single little root that is going down into the soil block and so what happened is when i took these little blocks and I put them into the big blocks. I think what happened is the tops dried out a lot faster and the bottoms of the soil blocks were still moist. So I wasn't really watering them that often because there was a little bit of mold growing. And I think what happened is the top, the actual part that had the root in it dried out and it killed some of the seedlings. I'm not gonna say a lot because the majority of these trays still have a lot of green on them. Um, I think it was really like some of these back ones, I don't really see anything. It was really just that one section in this tray right here that died back and I doubt will come back. I'm gonna move y'all back to the tripod. So as you can see in the trays, I have two different size soil blocks. I really enjoy them. I'm definitely going to wait longer until I up pot the mini blocks into the bigger two inch soil blocks. I think once I actually allow them to establish a root structure before I transplant them, it won't be as shocking. And then they'll also be able to, you know, grow roots into the bigger two inch soil blocks versus drying out on top and just eventually kind of petering out and dying. So I'm going to show you the two soil blocks that I have. I bought both from Johnny's. So the first one is this, I call it a mini blocker. Um, and it looks like this, and this is the bottom. Sorry, it's a little dirty, but there's 20 holes in this one. Um, and I would say this is probably about, you know, um, four inches maybe in, uh, in length and maybe about uh, three inches in diameter. And so these are great for saving space. And it's also great if you don't have seed that has a high germination rate, because what you can do with these is you can just plant one seed into each of these blocks. And it doesn't really matter if some of the seed doesn't germinate because you're not using hardly any space on your trays. So I can fit, I have, um, I'm gonna turn y'all around a little bit just so that y'all can see what I'm talking about. But this tray here, and I could probably even fit more if I um, if I put them a little bit close together. Um, but this is three, six, nine, twelve um, of you know these in that one ten by twenty tray. So that's a lot. Um, that's a lot of seeds, and you know it's really nice when you can allow the seedlings to stay in the side soil blocks because you can have more plants in a smaller space and 
Honestly, I think with some of these cool hardy flowers, I'm just going to try to leave them in these mini blocks and plant them directly out into my garden and then just put crop covers over them or row covers over them. I think that it would save a lot of space. It would save me a lot of time because I wouldn't have to up-pot them. Um, the only thing that I'm a little bit concerned about and is why I up-potted these mini blocks the first go around so soon is I was a little bit worried about them drying out too quickly. But I am going to try keeping them in here a little bit longer and see how it goes because if I can do that, that would save me a lot of time and effort. Right now, I'm currently watering my soul blocks uh, one time a day at night and then I am coming in in the morning and I'm misting them with a spray bottle. So I have this spray bottle right here. I just fill it with water and just do like, you know, four pumps onto each block. Um, and that seems to be working fine so far. The bigger, and that's for the mini blocks, the bigger soil blocks, I've been doing a bottom water maybe every three days, I would say, and then just misting the top, like with the, the misting setting on my hose. And that's been working out good too. So I think I'm going to keep up with that until they get a little bit bigger. And I'm just kinda, I'm gonna eyeball it. And if I notice them drying out, uh, more frequently. I'm just going to water them twice a day. So I'll come out in the greenhouse water them once in the morning before I go to work and then I'll water them again when I get home in the evening. And hopefully I'll be able to do that until most of these seedlings are ready to go into the ground. The second sole blocker that I got also from Johnny's is a two inch by two inch sole blocker. It looks like this from the side. And then this is the inside of the actual soil blocker. I have these little mini block inserts that I've put in here. And so you can take these out. These are interchangeable. So this is, I had to buy this separately. And then these are the little nubs that it came with. So this would be for something more of like, if you're trying to put a bigger seed, like if I was gonna be starting um, maybe like squash seeds um, indoors in my greenhouse, or if I wanted to start sunflower seeds early and then transplant them out, this is probably the attachment that I would use versus something like this where the little mini block when you transplant it up into the bigger soil block fits it, it this is the exact size of the mini blocks and so you just plop the mini blocks right onto the bigger soil block and that's it you're done that's how you transplant them or how you pot them up and so with these i consider this the front of the soil block right here where you can actually kind of put your finger um into the the block space this I consider the back of it. I can't put my hand into that block space. And the reason why I say that is it has a little bit of a lip right here. And so it's easier to hold from this angle and you can really like pack the soil into your soil blocker when you're holding it that way. Um, I've really enjoyed using these so far. So I don't really have anything right now that I want to up pot currently because like I said earlier, I'm going to wait until those little mini blocks have more of an established root system because I don't want them to dry out as I'm up potting them into the bigger soil blocks. So what I am going to do is I'm going to start the brassicas that I mentioned earlier. So I have some Chinese cabbage, uh, regular cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, more broccoli, broccoli. Um, and then I'm also going to be secession sowing some of my kale and lettuces that I started before that didn't really do so well when I up potted them into the bigger soil blocks. So the varieties I'm starting today, these are all Baker Creek seeds that I bought like two years ago, I think. So I'm not counting on the germination rate to be super great, um, but I'm still expecting a harvest and I'm not going to buy any more of these seeds because I think I have plenty on hand for what I'm going to be doing with them. So I have this uh, Cour de Bou cabbage. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. I've got some Chinese cabbage. I have amazing cauliflower. Um, this is a like Chinese variety um, broccoli. This is more of a um, like single shoot variety. So this is a non-heading um, broccoli. And then same with this. This is also a non-heading broccoli that uh, throws off more of a single stalk that you can eat. And then this is my heading variety of broccoli that I'm going to be planting. All right, guys. So I've moved us down a little bit lower just so it'll be easier for me to show you 
this tub of soil that I'm using. I like using trays that can hold a lot of soil all at once and I like mixing my soil together with water um, all in the same container just so that you're not having to constantly like keep adding soil, keep adding water, keep adding soil, keep adding water. So this is the method that I like to use and I think it works really well for the scale that I'm that I, the scale that I'm starting seeds on. So I'm gonna pan the camera down and then just keep talking to you from there, step by step on how I do my soil blocking. So as you can see here, I have some dry potting mix soil in this tub. This I bought from Tractor Supply. Um, it's actually a livestock feeder that you mount onto the ground or you can just put it onto the ground. Um, for animals to like eat green out of but I'm using it for soil blocking purposes because I thought it was the perfect size the tub sides weren't too high um, but it was still tall enough to hold soil in so I've really enjoyed this I don't have the measurements I think I took the sticker off um, I don't have the measurements of this bin but I can try to find a link for it and then put it down in the description below so the potting mix, as you can see right now, is very dry. It crumbles, it doesn't stick together in my hand. So we need to add moisture to it so that it will cling to itself and form those soil blocks. So I'm gonna grab my hose and then we will rehydrate the soil. And so I like to do a little bit of water at a time. Um, this doesn't look like a little bit, I know, but I don't want to completely saturate the soil. You don't want it to be too wet either because when you try to pack the soil into the blocker, it's gonna be basically soup and it's not going to um, stay into the shape that you want it. It's just gonna fall right through the blocker and it's not gonna hold the block shape. So I'm just mixing soil and water. And I may have actually done a perfect job. <laughs> yeah. So I think this is actually a pretty good ratio. All right. So water is squeezing out of it. It may actually be um, a little bit more saturated than what I was going for, but it does hold its shape when you squeeze it in your hand. Um, it doesn't just crumble and fall apart. So this is what we're looking for. Um, it doesn't, it's not an exact science guys. Like it doesn't have to be exactly at a certain moisture level um, in order to make the soil blocks. You kind of just have to play around with it and see what's working. Um, so I'm going to grab my mini block and we'll get started on making some soil blocks. All right, so I've got my mini blocker here and I am going to um, pack the soil into the mini blocker and then I have a tray um, to the side here that I'm going to be um, putting the little mini blocks in. It already has some flowers started onto it. I just got it off of the shelf beside me. Um, and I'm just gonna be adding some more soil blocks to that tray because I've already up-potted some of the things that I had previously started on it and I'm just trying to conserve space, which is the great thing about soil blocking. So we kind of just push down into the soil and then I like to do a little bit of a twist. And I maybe do this three times and so you end up with something that looks like this. And I just take the end of my spade here and I wipe off the access and kind of just pack it down. And so that's what you end up with. And so I just take my tray, I'm gonna move it over so that y'all can see. And so what I'm gonna do with this, I have my soil packed in here. I'm just gonna turn it to the side just so you can see and I'm gonna put my fingers 
um, in the little slot here. And then the way to release the soil is you just press down on this metal piece on the top. So I'm going to put it where I want it, right here. And then I'm putting my fingers in the slot. I'm pressing down. It's releasing the soil. And ta-da, there it is. So now I'm going to move it up to try to let y'all see. I don't know if you can tell, but there's little indents in the soil that the soil blocker makes. Um, and I can show you those in just a second. But that's where you can put those teeny tiny little seeds that can't be covered up with um, soil and require light for germination. Um, and so I just put the seeds directly into that little indent and I don't cover them with anything. Sometimes I'll put some vermiculite over top of it or just perlite. Um, I have a hard time sourcing vermiculite if I'm being honest with you. Um, I'm going to give you a close shot of the soil block right here, but you can tell that there's these little, um, the little metal pieces that kind of stick out just a little bit to make those indents. And so it's super helpful for holding your seed in the middle of the soil block and not letting it like splash out or roll off onto the side of the soil block and um, getting lost. So I'm just going to keep repeating this process until I fill this tray up um, and I may go grab another tray depending on how many I get to um, but I'm going to do like a little speed round of soil blocking for you guys um, just so that you can see what I'm doing. So here are the four uh, mini blocks that I just added to this tray here. Um, as you can see, they've got the little indents. That's where I'm going to put my seeds. So I'm going to go ahead and start um, sowing these brassica seeds in here. So I've zoomed you in a little bit just so that you can have a little bit of a closer view of how I'm putting the seeds on these soil blocks. I'm going to start with these cabbage seeds that I have. I just do this um, by hand. I do have a little cedar that I can show you guys in a second um, that I bought from Johnny's. I don't love it. Um, I've looked at some other cedars before too, but I honestly think that if you have good dexterity in your fingers and your hands, uh, it's probably just easier to pull these seeds by hand. These really aren't um, super small. So they're pretty big. They're about a size of like pelleted lime maybe. And these aren't hard for me to pick up. Some of the real small ones, so like the snapdragon seeds, the rebecchia seeds, those are usually pretty tiny. The lisiantha seeds are actually pelleted because they're so small. Um, those can be kind of a pain to kind of like hand pick. You can also take like a toothpick um, with just like a little cup of water. And I've seen people do that method before where they just kind of like dip the toothpick into the cup of water, just get the end of it wet. And then they can pick up seeds one by one with the toothpick. Um, I have not tried it. Honestly, it seems like it's a lot of work and I am just the type of person that I would rather just, um, you know, accidentally put two seeds into one little soil block versus, like sitting there and like taking a long time to put like one individual tiny lisiantha seed into the one soil block. Um, so this is just, this is just the way that I do it. All right, so that is 40 of the kind of smaller um, single serving 
cabbages that I started and then now I'm going to move on to my Chinese cabbage that I have from Baker Creek. I'm starting so many of these seeds because I've had some issues with other seeds that I've started from the same company. Um, just with their germination rates, I think they offer a very wide variety of plants that you're not going to be able to find anywhere else. They're kind of known for selling heirloom varieties. However, um, like the echinacea seeds that I got from Baker Creek that I was showing out earlier, um, those by far had like the worst germination rates out of all the flower seeds that I started. So um, I'm kind of like planting more seeds than what I'm actually going to need is like crop wise. Um, and that way I'll at least end up, I'm hoping to at least end up with half of what I'm starting that's going to go into the ground and will produce a crop for me. So I just finished all of my Chinese cabbage. I'm going to grab another tray and then we'll do that. All right, guys. So I've zoomed you out a little bit and then I grabbed another tray to start some of the broccoli and cauliflower seeds that I have. This is going very quick for me. I know I've been um, like speeding y'all up through the video just because you probably don't want to sit here and watch me um, start, you know, hundreds of soil blocks. Um, but do take the time to pause and label all the seeds that you're starting because I have gotten excited before um, and you roll through seeding these so quickly that you can forget to label what you've started. Um, and that can end up being a bad situation because you don't want to be guessing um, what you're putting into the ground, um, especially if it's something that is going to, um, something like these brassicas especially, um, because it's something that's going to peter out at a certain time and I like to be able to plan my garden out that like I'm going to be finished with one crop tearing it out and putting another crop in that's going to be lasting a little bit longer so I am anticipating that these brassicas are going to be heading up and I'm going to be harvesting them by the time that I'm going to be looking to put my peppers into the ground and so I'm going to be planting these where my peppers are going to go um, later in the spring. And so you don't want to be guessing what something is if you have a defined plan of where you want to put things. So always just be careful to stop and label what you're starting. Alright guys, so here is my tray of freshly started salt blocks for my broccoli and cauliflower. I'm going to go ahead and transplant some of these. Alright guys, so I've actually moved us back up a little bit and I had to close the greenhouse up. It had been super bright this morning and it gets kind of hot in the greenhouse when the sun is shining on it. So I had the camera like sitting halfway in and halfway out the greenhouse just so that it didn't overheat. Um, but I've closed everything back up, put you back on the table. So this is a little bit easier for me instead of, um, kneeling down on the ground and trying to move the camera up and down to show you what's going on. So I have my soil blocks here, um, and I'll move the camera down just so that you can see. Um, but I am going to put my broccoli and cauliflower in here. So 
I showed you before, um, amazing cauliflower. This is rapini broccoli, waldem, um, 29, and then yodfa, I don't know how to pronounce this, Chinese broccoli. Um, so I'm going to be starting them all in this tray. And... I'll probably just do a speed run of this too. Same thing. I'm not going to be using a cedar. This is what I've bought though. I'll show you what it is. Um, so it's this little cedar that I got from Johnny's. Um, it has these settings on it. I'm going to take the top off just so I can show you. So it goes from zero all the way to five, if that'll focus. Um, and it's got these little, um, these little holes in it. So this is the smallest one right here. And then, oh, wrong way. It gets bigger. Let's see if I can, there we go. So as you spin it, the holes get bigger and bigger. And so depending on what size seed you want to put in here, um, you can just, you know, rotate the top of it. Um, and then it will distribute out seeds into this little tunnel. I maybe we'll use this for bigger seeds. I had really bought it for smaller ones cause I thought it would be helpful to kind of tunnel them out. But um, some seeds are just so tiny. Like I was trying to use this for Lysiantha seeds and it just did not work. Those seeds are just so small and they come out very quick. They're very light. Um, so I don't think that it really worked for the purposes that I bought it for, but I am going to try to use it for bigger seeds and I'll let y'all know how that goes. But I'm going to pan y'all down so you can see me starting this broccoli. So I started 60 of the heading variety of broccoli that I have today. So it's the, um, the Waltham 29 broccoli. Um, I love to eat broccoli all throughout the year. The heading variety I think is going to be a little bit better for freezing because I do eat a lot um, of frozen broccoli in the winter. So I'm going to start more of that versus the non-heading variety that you eat kind of like um, kind of more like asparagus, like you eat the stalks on the other two varieties as well as the head. Um, and so I don't know how those two varieties are going to be frozen. And so I'm not going to start quite as many of those since I'm going to anticipate eating most of them fresh. This is the cauliflower that I'm starting currently. It's the amazing cauliflower that I got from Baker Creek. Um, I'm probably going to do another 60 blocks of these as well. Um, I usually buy frozen broccoli cauliflower mixes um, in the wintertime when I don't have any fresh broccoli and cauliflower growing. So I'm going to try to grow a little bit more this year so that I don't have to buy as much frozen from the grocery store.
So I've got about 70 cauliflower seeds started right now. Um, I ran out of seeds in the middle of this block. I'm just gonna pick it up with these Chinese varieties of broccoli. So these were the other two varieties that I was talking about. These are more like um, kind of asparagus, not asparagus tasting, but you eat them similarly to how you would eat asparagus because they're not brought, um, they're not heading varieties. And so you eat the stalks on these as well. So these are a little bit smaller seeds. These are the um, rapini broccoli. Um, I was finding that I was accidentally putting two seeds um, into one soil block, and that's totally fine. If you end up with two sprouts in one soil block, you can just either leave it and see what happens, or you can cut off like the weaker looking um, seedling and just uh, leave the strongest looking one in the soil block and use that. Um, instead. I'm going to pause here and label before I forget what I've planted. So I have these really old, um, you can see they've been kind of broken down from the sun. They've been staying in my greenhouse for the past uh, year. Um, but I just take these and a marker and I just do a quick sketch of what I've started and these are nice because they're small and I can just stick them either um, I'm gonna kind of stick it in the middle right now and I'll say that I have times three so I wrote broccoli waltham 29 times three so I know that these three soil blocks are all the same variety and then I move on to the next one I try not to use um, too many of these because I, I know that these are single use plastic. Um, I guess you could theoretically, if you're secession sewing, you could use these again. Um, but they do break down in the sunlight, the marker wears off of them and they like, this is kind of like melted. So it's in this kind of like weird funky shape. Um, so. And on here, I wrote amazing cauliflower times floor. I'm going to put it um, just up here so I know that I am going down one. And what I'll do with these soil blocks is I'm going to write rapini broccoli. And I'm just going to put this in the middle of these two. And so I know that these four are the amazing cauliflower. I'm not really worried about these five plants over here if I get it mixed up. These, um, all of these varieties should be planted relatively in the same um, spacing in between each plant. So I'm not really concerned about them getting a little bit mixed up. Um, I'm also not selling these to anyone either. So it doesn't really matter um, if I know what variety it is. All right guys, so I had to move you again. Like I said before, my camera sometimes gets overheated when it's in the greenhouse and sure enough it did as soon as I said something about it. Um, but I finished sowing my tray of broccoli and cauliflower seeds. Um, so this is it right here. As you can see, I've labeled all of what I've started. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and put this up on my shelf and get it in the sun and on the heat mat so it can start germinating. So I have 240 um, individual soil blocks onto one 10 by 20 tray. So that's, um, and I actually accidentally put um, two seeds in some of the soil blocks. So that's potentially over 240 plants that I could get off of one single tray. So that's a lot of seeds. That's a lot of plant starts. That's a lot of crops that I am potentially harvesting later in the season. So um, I think soil blocking is definitely something that I'm going to continue doing. I do have some learning curves still to work out and some um, 
some things that I still need to learn, but I think it has great potential for the farm on saving time, money, and effort um, into starting plants. So super excited about that. That's my process. Um, I've showed you what I have started so far. And yeah, thanks so much guys for watching. If you like this video, consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing. It would really help me out um, and give me ideas for what you want to see on next time. Thanks guys. Bye.